Uh, before we start, um, as a, 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 a sort of a cipher for doing a sound check, I am, al I am allowed to tell you one joke, um, because despite the title of my presentation, there aren't actually any jokes in it. <laughs> so before we get on to how Aristotle defeated the Nazis, I'd just like to tell you a joke that my three-year-old daughter made up, genuinely, and hopefully we'll get the sound. I've got a bit of a bad throat today. So, um, what's round and sounds like a whale? A wheel. <laughs> Is that okay? As long as I face forward. Okay, let's, let's start. So what's the difference between comedy and tragedy? Comedy is the Keystone Cops. Tragedy is the Keystone Fire Service. Comedy is quite a serious business to me. I've been fascinated with it throughout my life. And so it's no surprise as a hobby, I like to stand up on stage and tell jokes. Part of my routine is um, explaining my time at Clown College where we learned various things. And one of those things being Aristotle's seven principles of comedy which are principle number one, repetition, principle number two, mimicry, principle number three, repetition. <laughs> you see where we're going with this? Principle number four, are we on to that one? Repetition, <laughs> principle number five, knob gags, principle number six, keep people guessing. Principle number seven, I'll tell you later. So this is, um, I'm quite often asked, where do you get your ideas from? And this is obviously dressed up as Aristotle, but that's just for comic purposes, and not really Aristotle. And the story behind where I got this from, um, for that story we have to go back 25 years to when I was a sociology student at Bristol University, where I found two things. One, I had an awful lot of time on my hands. <laughs> and two, as a sociology student at the University of Bristol, I didn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> so, this is how I found myself uh, one Valentine's Day going to the cinema on my own to watch a film called The Name of the Rose. Sounds romantic. It's not. There aren't even any flowers in it. It's not about romance. The Name of the Rose is about deformed monks bouncing around a monastery, murdering each other. This is uh, the character Salvatore as played by Ron Perlman. Um, he's not the only deformed monk. The head monk is called uh, the Venerable Yorge, and he was played by an actor called Theodore Chialepin Jr., who um, you may remember from the very well-known film Moonstruck. He also starred in The Day They Killed Rasputin, which you may have heard of, and some films you may not have heard of. That slide's just there to give me a breather. I'm not going to talk about uh, Theodore's films, though. I'm going to talk about The Name of the Rose. The premise of this film is it was a murder mystery. Sean Connery and Christian Slater were a latter-day Holmes and Watson investigating why the monks were murdering each other. Now, unfortunately, if you haven't seen the film, this slide, does, uh, slide deck does contain a massive spoiler. I'm not going to tell you who committed the murder, but I am going to tell you the murder weapon and why the murder occurred or the murders, rather. So in the course of their investigations, Sean Connery found out that most of the murder victims had blackened fingers. And this was uh, because the murder weapon was a book that was coated with poison. And as they licked their fingers to turn the page, so they transported the poison into their mouth. Ingenious. Uh, the book that was coated with poison was a book on comedy. And the, uh, the murderer deemed that the uh, content of a book on comedy was so subversive that anybody who read it must die lest they tell other people about comedy. And this book was written by our friend Aristotle. It's Aristotle's second book of the poetics, but sadly, in real life, as in the film, the book no longer exists. So is there anything we can glean about what Aristotle thought about comedy? There are quotes in the first book on tragedy. This quote here demonstrates that actually uh, Aristotle thought that comedy did come from impersonation, or you might say principle number two, mimicry. He said this a lot, by the way. And also the next quote demonstrates that um, he thinks that comedy also originates from something called the phallic songs, which were popular in the cities in ancient Greece at the time. So basically he's saying principle number five, knob gags. 
So I'm going to end there, but I want to um, just emphasize that uh, Clown College is something that I made up and is in no way affiliated to the University of Chesterfield, and in particular their campus that they have in the village of Clown. And finally, I'm going to leave you with um, principle number seven, which seems appropriate for tonight, timing. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>